All the icons at the bottom of the program monitor, Premiere Pro calls buttons. Think of these as visual, clickable shortcuts. And these are customizable. To the right of the monitor, you'll find the plus sign to open your button editor. There are 34 different buttons in one spacer. You can add them by dragging them to the bar and remove by dragging them off the bar. You can put all the buttons in a single row, but when the window is smaller, you need to click the double arrow to access the unseen buttons. To avoid this, you do have the option of using two rows. Now let me give a brief overview of what every single button does. Keep in mind though that some of these actions have taken me complete YouTube videos to explain, so if you want further info, I'll put those tutorials in the description. Let's start with markers. Here you can mark your in, and this is how you mark your out. As you can see, hovering the mouse over the button also gives you the shortcut key, I and O. Marking a selection is useful for things like exporting, rendering, ripple deleting, as well as playing back a specific section of a video. And another pro tip is that it tells you the exact duration of a section. For example, I can create my in and out for this section, and in the bottom right of the program monitor is the exact hours, minutes, seconds, and frames of that selection. Go to in and out using these buttons. This one doesn't have a button, but to get rid of both markers at the same time, you can hit Alt or Option X, or you could use these buttons to clear your in and your out. To play from your in to out, you could use this button. Along with this is if you need to render a section of your timeline, then I would hit Shift plus Return or Shift Enter, and it will play your section back smoothly after rendering it. These are go to next and previous edit point. And if you're unfamiliar with the terminology of edit point, just exchange the word edit for something like cut or splice. This action is the same as when you use the up and down arrows on your keyboard. Let's say you want to create a marker. I can use the keyboard shortcut M. I can hit the marker icon to the left of the timeline. And finally, I could hit this. And here is go to previous and next markers. Now let's talk about playback. Here's step forward and backward one frame. This is the same as if you use your right and left keys on the keyboard. Toggle play button. Toggle play button is pretty self-explanatory. Play around the playhead is just that. It gives you some pre-roll and post-roll around where your playhead is when you hit that button. Loop playback. Set your in and out markers and Premiere Pro will loop playback between them. If there are no in and out markers, when Premiere hits the end of the timeline, it will restart at the beginning. Adding and removing footage. I have a couple videos on this subject, but if you're ever confused by the differences between insert, overwrite, lift, and extract, just look closely at the icons while I demonstrate. First, I'll double click a clip to bring it up in the source monitor. Create an in and out point. To the left of the lock on the timeline is the source patching for inserts and overrides. The track you select here is where the source clip is going to paste to. For insert, you can see in the icon, the clip is getting inserted and shuffling the current clips down the timeline. With overwrite, you can see that same clip coming down and there are no clips moving on the timeline. So it's writing over the footage that was there in the first place. With lift, I'm taking a section out of the timeline and leaving a gap where the footage used to be. And lastly, extract. I'm taking out a section, but Premiere will close the gap after that extraction. Guides and rulers. Here's the safe margins button. To change the ratios, go to the wrench at the bottom of the program monitor, overlay settings, settings. Under the action and title safe area is where you can adjust the percentage. Next, I'll turn on show rulers and show guides. Right click the ruler to display it in pixels or percent. You can also add a guide here, or you can just click and drag on guides from the top or side. Snap and Program Monitor allows you to align and snap your graphics to guides. I made a fun music video about all of these actions. If you want to check out more, I'll link it in the description. Also in the description are links to my preset packs and bundles. If you're a video editor looking to save time and you want to support me in the continuation of the content that I create on this channel, I would encourage you to check them out. My most popular product is the Transition Pack. It's 70 transition drag and drop presets for Adobe Premiere Pro. It has zooms, spins, glitches, slides, and more. There's also my Smooth Object Animation Pack. These presets allow you to animate an object, video, title, picture, or any asset in and out of the frame with the click of a button. Now let me move on to all the miscellaneous buttons that can help you with your editing workflow. Here we have the camera icon. By clicking this, you export a frame from your timeline. By default, the first part of your title is the name of the sequence, and then these numbers right here represent the time code at which the still frame was pulled from. After that, you have the number of still frame that you've exported from your project. These two icons deal with multi-cam sequences. Here I have some different angles. I nest those clips, and then I enable a multi-cam sequence. First, I'll click multi-cam view. 
Here, I can select the different camera views that I want to use. And if you want to toggle camera angles in real time, hit multi-camera on off toggle. By default in Premiere Pro, the numbers at the top of your keyboard represent the camera angle numbers. So if I hit play and switch between the numbers on the keyboard, Premiere will record my edits in real time to the multicam sequence. Or I could use the mouse to switch here too. When I hit stop, you can see that the edits were recorded. Revert trim session. At first, this one's probably grayed out. This becomes available after you have utilized trim mode. To bring up this mode, double click any edit point. Trim mode is useful for adjusting multiple edit points at once. Just click and drag or use the numbers down here, then hit the arrow keys to go to the next point. Once you're done creating your edits, click away. If you're not pleased with your adjustments, revert trim session should be available now. And it avoids that headache of hitting undo numerous times by just reverting your edit points back to where they were before the session. Toggle proxies. Think of proxies as stand-in low resolution files for your high resolution raw media. This makes for efficient, smooth playback on less powerful computers. Here's an example of playback before toggling on proxies, and here is playback after. You can see that the scroll has immediate feedback. If you wanna learn more about proxies, check out my video in the description. Toggle VR. Here I have some VR footage, and to utilize this button, go up to sequence settings, and down below, change the projection to equa rectangular. Toggle on VR, and now I can click and look around my footage like you would normally expect. To make this look wider instead of a square, go to the wrench, VR video, don't show controls. Next, do that again, but go to settings and do your monitor view horizontal to 180 degrees. Now you have a wider view to work with. Global mute effects is just that. Hit this button and it will turn off all your effects in the entire timeline. Super useful if some effects are bogging down your computer and you just need simple playback. Comparison view is most useful for matching color between shots. In the Lumetri panel, under color wheels and match, you can also hit it here. Find the reference frame on the left and hit apply match to apply that color to the clip on the right. Gang source and program. This is another tool that might be handy for referencing the color and look of your clips. It lets you see how a source clip compares to your sequence. As a simple example, here I've applied a black and white effect to my clip. And if you wanted to compare it to the raw source clip, I could go up to my sequence menu and hit match frame to bring up the original in my source monitor. Next, I'll turn on gang source and program and scroll through my timeline to see the difference. This is another feature I haven't really explored, so I'd love to know more use cases from all of you in the comments. And while you're down there, if this video was helpful, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. My name's Javier Mercedes, and until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.